Setting up the e-counter. The e-counter software runs minimized or open on, to th on the screen. Push the e-counter, configure the software. You can run 16 different e-counters together through a hub and you can define each port separately. So we can have probes in one port, encoders in the other, you give it an IP address so your computer recognizes it. It can be an inch pitch, metric pitch. You can set directions and whatever resolution your gauge is working at. That's basically the configuration page. Then, with the eCounter software to do the saving of the data, you can save the data. Let me pull that down. You can save the data all at once, weekly, daily. Here we can set it up to, to force it right into an Excel spreadsheet. It, uh, the way the software man describes is that when you latch the data or tell it to send the data, it basically f opens up a spreadsheet right on the screen and forces it right into it. You can actually write three Excel formulas right here in the data collection part of it. You've got a small little assembly that we have oh, that lets you address each pin. There's four inputs. You can set them up for resetting, presetting. If you would want to come in and rotate this shaft, we can actually hold the max data, hold the minimum data. So you can configure each application for doing select the max or the minimum, and then once you hold that data, we would have this button, this one. Let's say we want to hold it for these three axes. And we want to release the data after you've sent it to the computer. So the series of max and min holds. So every axis can be set up to work independent of one another. Here we can add, if you'd want port 1, and we want to add it to subtract it from port 2, and that's what it would display on probe number 1. We can do a range within the unit. If you'd have three units, it will define the range of those three probes. You can set up the displays for what resolution you want them. Now there's also a feature of limits that if you never want to accept a part or go ahead and find a shim for a part that's lower than this or higher than that, you can define these numbers as a control limit and an air limit. Then these colors actually change as they fall within the control limit. If it's between the control limit and the air limit, then they're actually yellow. And if they're greater than that, they turn red. Now when they do that, they also close an I.O. output. So you can actually stop something and shut it down. So it's a combination of a communication device, a PLC, and a way to interface.